<clears throat> what I want to do today is uh, I have a presentation here on poverty, jobs, and education in Pensacola. I grew up here in Pensacola. I grew up right there in Warrington, and you can see it actually in the middle of the screen. <clears throat> I, my mother, I was one of four boys. My mother was a single mother. We grew up in poverty. My mother was on welfare and food stamps. I went to Escambia, uh, Warrington Elementary School, went to Escambia High, PHS. <clears throat> You know, I know from growing up in that background how hard it is actually to get out of poverty. So it's actually poverty and jobs and education are going to be one of the biggest parts of my platform. See, this is me right here. <clears throat> That's me and my two of my younger brothers. I actually live in that same house. Actually, until a couple months ago, I had that same couch. <laughs> if you ever want to buy furniture that lasts forever, buy pine. You know, I grew up in, we used to be Samson as a kid, and I remember we used to go to the Bayfront and get uh, the government cheese and the government milk on the weekends yes. every year. And this is a Warrington Elementary School, that's the little school I went to. It's one of the, the poorest schools in the whole state of Florida. <clears throat> what I want to do, is showed to you today because, you know, growing up in that little bubble, the people I knew were poor, but I didn't know what the, the expanse of the problem was in this Gambia County. And a lot of people who grow up, they know that they're poor, they know that the people they know are poor, but they don't know that it's a widespread thing. In this Gambia County, actually one in five people live in poverty. And if you get into what we call Well, see, I'm one of the 80% of the people here. I messed up here. I'm missing a map. Sorry, just give me one second, please. Okay. I'm going to go back to this one here. I'm one of the 80% of the uh, Escape County residents who are just one paycheck away from financial disaster. That's one week miss from work or one $300 car repair. So not only is one in five living in poverty, but almost 80% of those Gambia County residents are living below what we call a living wage, where that we can actually save money, we can buy the things that we need, that we are not living on the brink of financial disaster. This is a slide here. One in five adults in Pensacola live in poverty. And when we get to West Pensacola, the areas that we know of as West Pensacola, that number actually jumps to two in every five adults. One in four children in Escambia County in Pensacola live in poverty. In West Pensacola, that jumps to half. Half of all children in the West Pensacola area live in poverty. Sixty percent of all women of color in Pensacola live in poverty. Seventy-seven percent of the people in poverty have jobs. That's a misnomer that a lot of people think that people are poor because they don't work. Actually, most people who live in poverty actually have jobs. Thirteen percent of those above poverty, or forty percent of the total population, are just two hundred dollars a month away from financial disaster. 65% of all residents here make less than what we consider to live in wage. The average single person makes $18,000 a year. That's $7,000 over the poverty level, or $4,000 over what is considered the living wage. And where we got the living wage from was actually the Studer Institute. They, we'll get to a slide on that a little bit later. 65% of all residents make less than what is considered the living wage. <clears throat> This is actually the uh, Studer Institute right here, what they consider to be a living wage. One adult is $22,000 a year. $4,000 more than what the average adult in Escambia County makes a year. For a household of two adults, two working children, $47,000 a year is what the uh, Studer Institute said is a living wage. The average family of four in Escambia County makes around $37,000 a year. $10,000 less what we we'll consider minimum wage. And if you look at what we call the housing, right, we're looking at for a person 
a single person to be paying around $600 a month for rent. Now, when we talk about rent and uh, housing in the area, we know that $600 a month isn't very available. Most rent in the Scammy County for one bedroom or apartment is about $700 a month. And then we move over to a family of four. We're talking about 10, almost 10 grand a year. We're talking about $800 a month. We're not going to find that in the Scammy County. Now, I wanted to show you this map. This is the map that shows the income by area in the Scandi County, by resident, by neighborhoods. And we see over here, in this area here, the red area is mostly what we call West Pensacola. <clears throat> this here, this is the Warrington area here with the 29,000. Most of the area is actually made a lot less in, this, in West Pensacola than what we actually consider the poverty level. 14,000 is $4,000 below what the poverty level is. And mostly that is senior citizens and people of color who live in that area who are. And one of the things that recently we had with the Studer uh, group is developing apartments downtown. And they considered them um, affordable. They're running, uh, I think, $750 a month for a studio, up to $1,500 a month for a two bedroom. Now, for people who live in that area, a lot of them are all the time homeowners. And you know, they have their houses are paid off, they're paying low mortgage payments, they're paying low insurance rates, they're paying low uh, income, uh, property taxes. But as they develop more and more into the downtown area, they're driving prices up and driving people out of these neighborhoods. Now, one of the things that we have to do in order to get to where we are in a living wage, is we have to decide what kind of jobs that we want here in Escambia County. One of the problems with jobs here and the part of poverty is that the jobs do not pay. When you take a look on the websites that, for job listings here in Escambia County, search the job titles by listings here in Escambia County. There was 15 for cashiers, 13 for cooks. These are the top job listings. For customer service reps, 11. For assistant managers, 11, assistant store managers, 11, and servers, 11. The top seven posters for jobs in Escambia County were Ascension Healthcare, Dollar General, Landrum, Express Temporary Services, Baptist Hospital, Domino's, and McDonald's. Now, the two temporary agencies actually had more job listings than four other companies put together, and that's the top seven. And even in the healthcare industry, most of the jobs listing were $12 to $13 an hour, which puts people still below what we consider a living wage. 90% of these jobs pay actually below minimum wage that were being offered between minimum wage and $12 an hour. The living wage for a single person in Pensacola is considered $10.59 an hour. For these jobs here, This is what we consider a living wage, and these are the jobs by type that were listed. Now we see the living wage here for a family of four is $59,497 an hour. Now one of the top jobs being offered in our area, which was very few of them, was actually production trades, which we consider bricklayers, um, painters, and they were being paid about $30,000 a year, which is 51% of what we consider a living wage. Now, if you had two people in your household who were in the building trades, you're doing pretty good. <clears throat> then we get down to the truck drivers, which the average is $27,490 a year, which is only 46% of the minimum, uh, living wage. Now, we get down to here where the most jobs that were actually being offered online, which are cooks and cashiers, we're talking about 27 to 30% of what we call living wage. Almost 80% of the jobs in the Scammy County fit into this group right here. And what we need to do is improve education. <clears throat> now, in the Scammy County, we have 40,613 students enrolled in school. Of those students, 10,000 of them 
come from families that are in poverty. One quarter of them. Our graduation rate here in Escambia County is 72%, and that's actually gone up from four years ago where it was 66%. African American graduation rate is actually 61.8%, and that's up from 54%. <clears throat> One of the biggest problems that we have with schools here is poverty. Poverty leads to things like stress, um, hunger, giving up the will to learn. <clears throat> In our schools, African Americans make up 61.8% of all graduates, sorry. In-school suspensions for African Americans, though, increased from 57% to not 59% in the last four years. And children who live in poverty are seven times more likely to drop out of school. <clears throat> Many factors lead to dropouts, one of which is getting into trouble at school. Now, I know when I was growing up, my mom worked late in the evenings. She worked the 3 to 11 shift at Baptist Hospital. And during the daytime, she went to school. She was trying to, you know, work to better herself. And that's, that's the American dream, right? Go to school, work to better yourself. <clears throat> but that left a lot of kids at home unsupervised. So as me and my brothers were a rough bunch at the time, you know, we would have fights. We'd get into things in the neighborhood. And those things would spill into school because we didn't have any kind of supervision at home. And that's one of the problems with poverty. You don't have supervision, you don't have the time with your children, you don't have the time to be role models. In Escambia County, 442 students were arrested in 2014. Escambia County is number two in the state of Florida for youth referred to the juvenile justice system. 5% of all children in Scampton County between the ages of 10 and 17 are arrested in a single year. Now, when I did this, I didn't realize that even for, um, in Escambia County in Florida, we have a higher rate of children being charged as adults than 40 other states. Almost, uh, I think it was something like 80% go right in without any, um, go right into the, the adult justice system without even going to court to adjudicate them as adults. And then the funny thing is, is 75% of them end up on probation, and then you have to wonder, was there crime enough to charge them as adult if there are crime was enough to only give them probation? <clears throat> One of the other distractions on uh, uh, poverty, on education, is executive function uh, skills, stress causes mental problems with children. Now, a child who lives in a household whose parents are stressed, that stress uh, transfers to their children. A parent who doesn't know where their light bill is coming from, who's not being able to feed their children. Actually, I just read this too, that is Florida is uh, number 40 in the nation for people who are living, um, I forgot what the term was, um, where they don't know where their next meal is. Um, food, can somebody help me out? Um, huh? Well, it, there's an actual terminology for when they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Um, sorry, but Florida's number 40. For parents, you know, we see it all over this county, County, we're seeing the signs out, free breakfast, free lunch. Because actually, one in four children in this county, county go to a school that uh, gives free lunch automatically because so many students in those schools are living in poverty that they automatically give the whole school free lunch. I know because my daughter went to one. We, from Warrington Elementary to Warrington Junior High School, we didn't have to buy lunch for our daughter the whole time because all those students were on free lunch, Bellevue Middle School. <clears throat> and they are living paid to check to paycheck. But where's the paycheck to paycheck is day to day, where's my next meal coming from? Now imagine the stress of a child not knowing where his next meal is coming from. A 10-year-old who has to go to school the next day not knowing where his next meal is coming from. Imagine being a 17-year-old whose electricity has been turned off in the middle of August and the first couple weeks of school, having to deal with 
The fact that they're sleeping in 90 degree weather, they're sweating, they're going to school, they don't have the resources to wash their clothes, how that affects their education. You know, it's more than just money. Qualify for free lunch, a family of four would have to have an income of less than $29,000 a year. And we're talking about one-fourth of all students who are from families with incomes less than $29,000 a year. Approximately 25% of all those students get their daily meals at school. That's all they're getting. They're getting breakfast and lunch. And that's why we're running the programs that we are for the breakfast and lunch programs during the summer. Because during the school year, that's the meals that students are getting. They're going home and they're not being fed because either their parents don't have the money, or in some cases, the parents spent the money, but at the same time, <clears throat> crime hunger can prevent students from making the most of education. Food provides fuel. Without energy, kids become confused, unfocused, and unable to learn. Additionally, poor nutrition affects sleep and brain development, resulting in long-term learning disabilities. <clears throat> and the, 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 one of the effects of poverty, and especially with Children is generational. Parents go through the system of poverty and poor education. They, they're not able and equipped to help their children deal with poverty and poor education. You know, it's like they changed to the uh, new math standards. And we all went through the old math standards. You kids come home now, I can't help them with math. I don't know how this uh, new math is done. <clears throat> Hunger also causes behavioral problems that lead to problems that we already discussed with juvenile justice. Um, many children in poverty have low self-esteem. <clears throat> they see the family problems and they blame themselves. They, you know, they hear that, you know, families without kids aren't poor. <clears throat> Which leads to behavioral problems. Children often lack parental uh, guidance because their parents are often missing due to divorce or incarceration. Children are also blame their parents for poverty. This leads to a lack of respect and anti-authority toward behavior.